everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you the crafty goodness that I've been working on. Thank you guys so much for watching the little palm size printer video that I put up. And for those of you that clicked through on the link and just went and checked it out, I really appreciate that too. Many of us here on YouTube receive a lot of emails about companies that want us to make videos and do collaborations or sponsor videos or whatever. And I, I try to find ones that seem, first of all, real and not a scam. And second, that would work well for me and or you or both of us or something along the lines of a household item or a crafty item. I know that type of video is not popular with a lot of people and some people get really upset with it, but YouTube and Patreon and Etsy and such is my job. So I have to do different things to do my job, you know, so that type of thing. So it's really nice when you guys click through and watch the video, let it run in the background, even if you're not interested in listening to it, and then just click through to the special link that I put down in the description box, because that shows these companies that I am a good channel to work with. So we're trying to build up the confidence in different companies and stuff so that we, as in me and you, we could work with other companies that maybe we can zone it in a little bit more and work with some more fabric and quilting and rulers and marking pens and just random things like that. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you guys for hanging out with the half rectangle triangle video. I had so much fun making these and I really love the batiks when they're up against the white like this. And then I'm making a tote bag. So here is one panel. And then the second panel, I did bring in some of those lighter fabrics and I'm a little bit iffy on it, but I think overall that I do like the look and it's not too bad to have them in there. Probably could have done a little better job mixing them up, but you know, when you wear a tote bag, you put this side out to the world, put this side to your body and it's fine. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I really love this and I would use this if I were a tote bag out in public type carrier. I do need to make at least one for myself so that when I wanna put smaller bags inside the big bag and go out and do something, I do have that available but I just like to share them with you guys. Now I chose a blue lining to go with it. I would have preferred, I really had this eye on a nice a bright green, kind of like this color green in a batik, but I went with the blue and I played it nice and safe because I thought with the blue at the bottom, some people might want that. I could have put a white lining on, but I didn't have enough of this. Can you see the little swirls on that white fabric? I've been using that as a background for a lot of projects and I'm just about all out of it. And I didn't have enough for the lining and I didn't want to mix my whites, you know? I didn't want to have like a floral white with a swirl white. So I went with the blue. And I think with a tote bag, it's big enough that when you open it up, you'll have plenty of light going in so you can find things within it. Plus I'll add some, maybe I'll put some white pockets, slip pockets versus my usual ones. I'm not really sure yet, but I'll at least use something. Maybe I'll still use the green to make my pockets so that when you have the green zipper and stuff, it'll still add that green fun. Okay, in case you wanted to see the back, apparently my fingers wanted you to see the back. You might be able to see my crosshatch quilting and then the straight line. Yes, there's a couple threads in there. They are tied off and I just wanted, sometimes I just leave them in there for security and then I quilt over them a few times just to make sure they don't pop out. So it's a nice safety secure feature for that. So I'm gonna keep working on this. I don't know, I still might end up with green handles or something. You never know what I might come up with because I still need to do the handles in the pockets. So remember, if you ever see anything here on my Whip It Wednesday videos or sometime working on Friday, you can always call dibs on it and then that project becomes priority and I will finish it up right away as soon as I possibly can, of course, and pop it in the shop for the person who called dibs. Because sometimes it might take me a couple weeks to finish that and you don't always wanna wait. My patrons and I worked on a classic. We worked on quilted coasters. This time it's kind of like a log cabin, but cut a little differently. And mostly because I got excited about the pattern and then I did it wrong. So it's just, it's okay. It ended up fine. I love the way these turned out. They were basically going to be scraps going this way that were cut on a diagonal and it made it look kind of fun and different but my eye and brain connection misinterpreted it. And I ended up with this, which is a happy, oops, 
I think that's fine. These are actually the fabric scraps left over from the bowl cozies. These were left over scraps and the other ones I just cut into jelly roll type strips, two and a half inches. So all of these will be going in the shop. I might do these four in a bundle and then these two in a bundle, or I might do all six. I'm not really sure. I see a lot of the listings on Etsy where they do four coasters in a bundle. So that might be the way to go since these four are the same and these two are different. We'll see. Now working with scraps, this has become my to be worked on fabric postcards or fabric postcards I need to finish. However, you want to put that sentence the way it works properly. With the bowl cozy fabrics and when I made the bowl cozies, I tend to snip off or we all snip off the darts and I tend to just save the triangles. So I'm working on some fabric postcards with those triangle scraps. So I have two of those. So these need to be quilted. And when I work on projects like this, I just put it on fusible fleece so it holds it in place while I'm doing it. You can also use a spray adhesive. I happen to have mine sitting right here. I use a heat and bond spray adhesive. You can also use just a fusible interfacing. That works too, and it's a much, much cheaper than the fusible interfacing. So I'm actually going to be sewing on these today. It is a nice, fun, relaxing project. I want to get these sewn. And then with the half square rectangles when I trim them off you may remember there was a piece at the top that got trimmed off and a piece at the bottom so one time it would be a white piece of fabric and the other time it would be a batik you know me with my batiks I couldn't throw away the scraps so I saved them because when they're sitting on the table they just look big but I was thinking I would sew them together like like this all in, a all in a row like when we do our scrappy calculator paper, which has actually been calling to me. So I might be working on those projects again soon. But anyway, I thought, well, I'll sew it together. But no, they're so, so tiny, so narrow. Uh, once again, fusible fleece. And I just overlapped them a smidge, more than an eighth, less than a quarter. And then I did the same thing with the rows. So I laid down one row and then I laid down the next one. I kind of alternate them. I don't worry if they're straight, if... There's too many blues in one piece. I just go ahead and do it, give it a nice press from the iron. Again, the fusible fleece works really well with fabric postcards. This one's a little bit more blue. And it just makes working with the scraps so much easier. So these are gonna get sewn up in the fabric postcards. I'm trying to build up a little bit of a stash so I can list some of these scrappy type ones in the shop. And then you can specifically choose which one you want. Like you can have a triangle, you'll get one of these, and then you can have a batik rectangle and you'll have one of these. I also purchased some new, well, not that they're new, but I needed to resupply myself of the fabric postcard supplies. So I had to purchase the comic book boards. You can do a search either here on my channel or you can just go to the YouTube search engine and do RS Island Crafts fabric postcards and you'll see all the different ones that I've shown videos for. It is easier to go to my channel if you're looking for like playlists and stuff because you can hit the playlist area and then look for the fabric postcard. But these are the comic book boards that I use. There's two different brands that I use and it depends on whether or not Amazon has them in stock. The original ones that I was using, they no longer have in stock, so I use these. And it takes a little bit of time because I take one of those big paper cutters with the arm that goes I love that sound. I was talking to a friend about it and it's just a very mesmerizing sound to hear that paper cutter. So I purchased a book of how many come in here? A hundred boards. So I get 200 fabric postcards out of this. And then I also had to purchase shipping labels and the labels for the fabric postcards. And those come four onto a sheet. So once again, I just cut them that way. It's a lot cheaper to purchase them in sheets and cut them yourself than to get the labels that are already ready to go. I had to get new clear envelopes, so I pretty much had to get everything I needed for the fabric postcards. I'm trying to give myself a little bit of grace because with the move, there's a lot of things and not feeling well and adjusting to a new state and a new house, new situation. I'm still trying to find my stores. So there's so many things I want to do and I'm just trying to pace myself because I'm still unpacking and organizing. But one of the things I've been working on this week is the RS Island Crafts Advent. 
If you've been here for a while, I'm sure you've seen my Advent series in December, but if you're new, my friend and I, a few years ago, we were watching the Missouri Star and the different sewing Advents and stuff where someone would open up, you buy a big box full of stuff and every day during Advent, you would open up a package and we were comparing what people received to the cost of it and we thought, that's crazy. But we love the idea of the Advent where we can open up something every day. So we decided to do a friend's Advent and I would pick 24, 25 items, wrap them up and send them to my friend prior to December 1st, and she would do the same thing. But our thing was, is we think of each other and what we like and maybe, so let's say you like a certain sewing thread or thimble or embroidery or something, you take what you like and you send it to your friend so that you can see, you know, does she like it? Is it something she wants to do? And she can say, oh, well, you know, I really like your needles better than my needles, so I'm gonna switch over. We also said we can do it really inexpensively. If you find something in your stash that's already there, fabric, scissors, whatever, it doesn't matter if it's used, we're okay with that. We would also send things that we find at the Dollar Tree because the Dollar Tree has been getting a little bit better over time. And we also said garage sales are free game too, thrift stores, whatever. And we wanted to keep it small items because shipping, we had to ship to different states. Shipping, it can be very expensive. And also, you know, boxes that get bigger and bigger and you just don't want to do that. You, you don't want to spend 30 or $40 on Advent items and then spend 20 or $30 to ship it. It just doesn't balance. So last year we were talking that it might be fun to do an RS Island Crafts Advent. Now I can't, there's no way I can compete with like Missouri Star. I can't sell 200 Advents. I can't curate them or anything like that. So we were talking about it on a few live streams and everything. And I decided that this year I'm going to do four RS Island Crafts Advent boxes. One for my friend and four for people here on the channel. So those will be in my Etsy shop. I'm thinking I want to put them in in August. That gives you guys enough time to think about it now. And then after August, it gives you enough time to make sure you're not in the whole Christmas time. So those people who like to budget ahead of time and everything, it'll be there and ready ahead of time. And if I want to ask these people any questions like what's your favorite color or do you like flamingos or something crazy like that, it gives me enough time to still work on it. So I've been working on it throughout the year. I started actually last year before the advent because it was just something that I was tossing around in my head. So for, for a, there's only going to be four advent boxes and right now I really don't have any idea what the price is. I'm trying to keep everything reasonable, but some of the things I'm going to be doing is I've purchased some things at the Dollar Tree just to give you an idea of what might be in it. If you've watched any of my advent series and what I've sent my friend, you kind of have an idea of what I would put in your package. I don't want to spoil all the fun, but I want you to have an idea so that you know you're not spending money and then getting things you don't like. It's going to be very, 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 I, I want to repeat it again, very similar to what I send my friend. So if you're not interested in Dollar Tree items, then this is not going to be the box for you. So just to give you some of an idea of the things that I have around me right now that I've picked up. So I did pick up, whoops, the different stickers like this to iron on, not stickers, they're iron on applique from the Dollar Tree. So I will have some of those in there. I recently sent my friend something for her birthday and she said it was really great and she loved it. So I bought four more from Amazon. So Amazon has these bundles and they're seam rippers. My friend asked for a seam ripper for her birthday. So why would I send her a seam ripper when I can send her, I think this might have 10 items in it or something like that. But there's big seam rippers, little seam rippers, the one with the little red ball on it. There's like the razor blade one. There's these these little thread snips and stuff like that. And they come in a nice little box and everything. So I thought that was great. I thought they were gonna come in a plastic sleeve. So I picked up four for the Advent. Generally what I put in the Advent is things that I would like because I'm the one that's curating the Advent, so why not? It's gotta represent my channel. Now I'm not gonna have things in the Advent that are like Aurora's Island crafts everywhere, but I will have things like I'll make a zipper pouch or I might make some, might make some coasters like this. And at that point you would have my RS Island Crafts label on it, but it'd be like that if you bought it from my shop anyway. The other thing I picked up, please excuse all the crinkling, is the little round donut bobbins. I needed one myself and I only wanted one or two of them and it came in a pack of four. So I thought, well, that makes sense. I need four for the advent, one for my friend and one for me, so that's five. So why not get up two packs of four 
And then that means I can have more myself. I mean, why not? It gives me three of them, right? So I found these on Amazon and they're the silicone ones. I received one of these donuts a while back from one of you guys that sent me some happy mail. And I love having my bobbins in here. It actually holds the thread in really well. If I get crazy and I start using it a lot, the thread can get a little wonky if I don't pay attention to where I put it in. I try to put it so that the loose bit of thread is at the bottom so the silicone can hold it. They have the long rectangular boat ones. I love those. They're in my wish list if you want to see what those look like. And then these. So here it is empty. You just put your bobbin in there. I separate my thread based on what's in the donuts. I, I separate. Hold on. I use these bobbin donuts to, see, to keep my thread separated. I've said that four times and I can't get it out. So this is how I organize. There we go. That's how I organize my thread. So this one has a medium gray. Now I have a light gray, medium gray, and dark gray, and they're really similar when you just look at the spool. So I keep all the bobbins in separate places so I know which one's which. And then these are connecting threads that came in a little variety pack that someone so generously sent me as a gift. So I keep those over here. So when I pull out that little plastic container with the different threads in it, they're very pastel and light colors and stuff. Then I know it'll go right to this bobbin. So this yellow thread goes with that and another yellow thread would be in a different bobbin. I also like to fill these with just white thread. So I'll have one with my cotton thread and then I have a cone of poly cotton blend. So I wanna make sure that those bobbins are separate. So when I make bowl cozies, I'm not using the wrong thread. So I just keep everybody separate and I just really love these. This has been the best organizer for me. So if you purchase one of my admins, you will receive one of these. Of course, the money I spend has to be put towards the price of the advents, but I thought by adding the handmade items, you'll get a little bit of the fun RS Island crafts. You'll get something specially made for the advent. Then it kind of offsets it. Now, of course, you want to be paid for your time when you put things in your Etsy shop and the prices and stuff, but I can kind of offset the price and keep it reasonable to make sure I'm Let's be realistic. This is a business thing. When people do the advents, they might spend $25 or $50 and they're charging $100, $150, $200 because you have the packaging, you have the shipping, you also have you know the time spent wrapping them, making the videos for me, and a lot of people make the videos and stuff. So there is a lot involved in it. So there is gonna be a little bit of an offset between what things cost to make and then the cost of the advent. So that's just reality, you know, just because I'm a single small business, I'm sorry, I've been watching a lot of videos where people have been like hitting hard on the small businesses, expecting them to give things for free in a less price because, hey, you're a small business running it out of your house, you shouldn't make any money. And that's kind of hard to say about a small business, right? Just because we're not Walmart and impersonal or any other big, you know, it's, JC is still around? JC Penney's just popped into my head. I know they went out of business in Florida, but I think they might still be around in some places. But anyway, so you're not like Joann's. I'm not Joann's, I'm not Walmart, I'm not Dollar Tree. I can't do what they do. So there has to be an offset and there has to be a value to my time all year long collecting these different items. I just wanted to put that out there for those people that needed to hear that it's there. And for everyone else, I really thank you guys for your understanding and your love and your consideration and your support. I was also thinking now that I can stop waving that around. I was also thinking it'd be fun. I like when you see the advents that have, they'll give you like a charm pack of fabric and then there's a pattern and they do that with those like monthly subscription boxes and everything too. Those are really fun. Kind of hesitant on whether or not, that is a good thing for me because once again, you get things in the box that you're not going to use and you don't have anyone to gift them to and stuff like that. But some of them boxes, it's just a fabric and a pattern. They like nail it. They know what they're doing. They got it. But I thought that I could put some fabric in there, whether it's scraps or charm packs, uh, some neutral fat quarters or something. And then I can make a personal video that's just for me, me, my friend, and the... Four Advent people, is that right? Yep, that's it. So the five of us 
could sit down, it would be a recorded video, of course, and then you guys can make a pattern that specifically, or a project that's specifically to the stuff that I sent you, and then only us six people would be able to have access to that video. So I thought that would be fun too. Okay, enough Advent talk. Let's go switch over to the community quilt. I'm almost not quite yet ready to start hanging up a quilt batting here. I still need to get rid of all of these boxes and get rid of them, meaning unpack them or put them into storage or something like that. I'm, I had more fun sewing this week, working on things like this, than I just didn't want to do any unpacking. Totally understandable. But this week that we're in right now is really, I've got to knuckle down and get things. I had to order a step stool, a two-step ladder, a nice, strong, sturdy one, so I can feel safe standing on it, so I can utilize those really top, top shelves in my closet. So once I get my closet organized, then I can go ahead and start bringing more boxes in and getting things put away and, and organize my fabric so I can actually find things. So your scrappy word for today is tote or tote bag however it works for you do you guys make tote bags are you like me where it's like for me i find that it's like a mini quilt i can play with the fun designs and not be committed to a giant bed size quilt or even a lap size quilt i can just play with it and here is a little tote bag with a mini quilt on it that people can take out and show off now i may make the same tote bag a couple of different times and sometimes like my santa tote bag and my elf tote bag those all look the same even if i use different fabrics they're all going to be a red santa belly with a belt on it and stuff like that but i try not to do too many duplicates i might make another one like this but it would be different fabrics and i could switch up the rectangles and change it up a little bit so it's not identical but as you and I know, it would be the same pattern. It would just be different. So while I wouldn't be comfortable calling this a one of a kind, this one is generally, you're not gonna find another person with the same exact identical tote bag. Even if I were to repeat the pattern, I would change up the fabrics. Tote bags and pillows and mini wall hangings, those are just some of my favorite things to make. So let me know down below in the comments, do you make tote bags or what is your favorite thing to make? Now for the community quilt, I did not go to the post office this week. I didn't have any Etsy sales and I went to the post office, I think Monday of last week. Normally I go either on Fridays or Mondays and I just haven't gone yet. There's no orders to ship out yet. And I didn't know, I, I'm not aware of any packages that might be coming for me. Like I didn't order anything and have it shipped to the post office box versus my house. So I'll go later on this week and just check it and see, but always watch the community tab and the pinned post on Patreon, pinned Patreon post to see any new community blocks that come in and I'll put them at the top. I think I am all caught up on sending out thank you fabric postcards. So you guys should have all received those by now, hopefully, except for some of our international people. Sometimes it takes a week or two to receive those. So if yours has already been sent out, I'm sorry, it's still hanging out at the post office waiting for me to go up. Now, speaking of shipping out Etsy orders, just a little quick thing at the end. I put up a community tab over the weekend. I did list the, I don't know why I'm pointing so much, I'll put my finger away. I did list the scrappy fabric bundles. They're in my Etsy shop. If there's anything, I'm sure there's some left still. It's only Wednesday. You can check down below in the description box for a link to my Etsy shop or just go to Etsy and Sometimes it's easier to go to Google and type in RS Island Crafts Etsy and it pulls my shop up quicker than if you go directly to Etsy. Unless of course you have my shop favorited and thank you so much. But I put in the scrap bundles that are the various width, the one and a half to three and a half widths of a lot of it's a lot of it really is the width of fabric scraps. So those are a little over I try to do one pound, one ounce, one pound, one ounce. Point three or something. I just want to make sure it's over a pound so you have a little extra and just in case my scale got crazy and didn't weigh things right. So I put in I think six of those bundles and then I put in bundles of the six inch wide strips that I cut and there's five or six of those. Now those are with the fabric, small chunks, just whatever I pulled out of the fabric and I just cut six inch wide. Some of those fabrics might be in the narrower strip bundle but each bundle has duplicate fabrics within it. And if you were to purchase five bundles, I can just about guarantee you that three of these bundles have the same fabric, three of these bundles have repeat fabrics, but all five bundles might have different fabrics. Does that make sense? 
And then there's also a bundles. I think there's another five or six bundles where I just had a piece of fabric like this. So I either cut it in half, whatever size it is, and I put it in two bundles, or I just fold it in half like this and put it in two bundles. It could be eight or 12 inches, squarish, rectangle-ish, whatever, or it could just be two inches. So it could be something like this. It just never went into the strips because for the strip bundles, I was doing more of the yardage and the width of fabric and stuff. So I have those all listed separately. I haven't listed this last bundle yet because I'm not sure if anyone was interested, but as I was cutting up the strips and stuff, I would take the salvage and cut it off if it was long enough. So there's some salvages in here. So you might have some of the salvages like this. Sorry about the light. Some of the salvages are like that. So you might not have any numbers. You might have numbers. Some of them might just be plain. I don't see one in here, but this one might be. Yeah, this is kind of like it. So you have, you have on one end of the salvage, you have the words on it. And then on the other end of the fabric, you have just the salvage with the pictures of the fabric on it. So there's some of those in there. And then there's just some random crumb type strips. So there's just some some fabrics that look like this and this does have some salvage so it's just a mixture I really wasn't sure if I should list it or not so if anyone's interested in this let me know I'll go ahead and list it I just couldn't think last night when I was doing these the other day it was at like eight nine o'clock at night when I was making the listings and I just couldn't think of how to label them and to describe it in a way that people knew what they were purchasing. So I'm going to lay them all out, organize them, take a good picture of them so people can see what's in the package and then just put it as some type of a miscellaneous salvage and crumb strip bundle. See, I can figure that out today in the daylight, but in the nighttime, sometimes your brain's just too tired to come up with that. So I think we've hit on everything. There's something going on on Wednesday. I don't remember what it was. It's like sewing day or I'd maybe this Wednesday's scissor day or last Wednesday. Have you guys seen on Instagram, Missouri Stars giving away all kinds of scissors, all the different uh, affiliates that, that they talk about Missouri Star. Missouri Star sends them a bundle of stuff and they use it in their videos and they get the word out and everything. So all kinds of people are giving away scissors over on Instagram. I don't know how long those giveaways are lasting, so you can go ahead and check those out. But I'll have to see if I can find it and I'll put it down here if I do. But Wednesday's something. Happy quilting day, happy sewing day. So whatever today is, happy Wednesday. And I hope you guys are having a great week and it is getting nice and warm out, isn't it? I see springtime everywhere. We've had our first 90 degree days and now we're down into the 80s again and upper 70s and we're at the yo-yo. But from today going forward for the next seven days, as far as I can see in the weather app, it's like 90 to 94 or a little bit higher. So I heard that summer has hit Arizona. I really don't know what that means. I was outside working in the yard pulling the weeds because springtime here, there's like a two or three week time where they get like rain. And then for two or three weeks after that, apparently it's like weed season where everyone has to go and take care of all the weeds in their yard. I saw this last year. I'm sorry to laugh, but it's just crazy to think of what season is it? It's weed season. So you have to spray down your yards because it's all rocks and stuff. There's not much grass here. So you spray down the rocks and everything to keep the weeds under control. All of our rocks, and I'm looking out my window right here, all the rocks and the mulch, they have like that plastic underneath it or that, that netting stuff to hopefully keep the weeds under control. And I'm here to tell you, it probably needs to be replaced or something because it's not keeping the weeds under control. The kids and I laugh because even the AstroTurf gets weeds where the seams are. And someone told me they have to put drain holes in it so that when it rains, the water can go through the AstroTurf into the dirt and soil and stuff. So we just get random weeds popping up out of our fake grass. So even our fake grass has weeds. So it's weed season. It's okay. I found a wild, a wild tomato plant growing. If you saw in our, this is our new home in Arizona video, on the side of the house, there's a cement walkway. And where the cement wall is, they have, the wall is flush, but they have these like cement pillars that are right there. And in the sidewalk, they cut out a spot. So there's like a spot to grow flowers or something. 
And I don't know if the people who lived here before just threw a tomato there. They had a dog, maybe a dog ate the tomato and the seeds got in the ground or a bird flew over, but it grew a tomato plant. So I'm nurturing the tomato plant right now to see if I can get it to grow. It's about this tall because I waited well, I waited a long time to do the weeds, okay? I just didn't want to do it when it was cold. So I was out there in the sunshine. It was 90 degrees. It was 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was beautiful out. It was gorgeous. Now, I did feel the sun baking my skin, but I didn't sweat. It wasn't hot, so it was really great. So I'm really looking forward to this little time frame here before we get into June and July and everyone just melts. So thanks so much for putting up with me and hanging out with me. I know some of you love these longer chitter chat videos. And for those of you who don't, you've already left. So you don't know what you're missing because you never know when Robin's going to throw in a tidbit like a dog ate a tomato. The seeds landed in a little itty bitty dirt spot that's about four by six. And now there's a tomato. I'm going to put a picture right here for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, don't forget. Saturday morning is a live stream. I have to get back in that routine. Saturday morning's the live stream at 11 a.m. Arizona time. I have no idea what time it is anywhere else because I always have to stop and think because we didn't do daylight savings time. So it's 11 o'clock here. It was 11 o'clock two months ago and it's going to be 11 o'clock six months from now. So I'll see you on Saturday and on Friday and every other video day because at the end of a video, sometimes Robin just gets wacky. Bye.